Look, I got some more dragon glass! Hi everybody, Beanmeister22 here, and this is my latest haul from Glass Buttes, Oregon, where obsidian hunting and rock hounding is number one. And why do I say that? Well, because depends on where you look on the interwebs. Glass Buttes, Oregon is either the largest obsidian deposit in the world or one of them. Now, does it really matter whether it's the largest or the next to largest? No, not really. But for our purposes here, there's something even more special. Approximately 6,000 acres of the area has been designated as free, public use, no permits, open to the public. It doesn't cost you anything. You can go out there and collect a reasonable amount of obsidian for your personal use. You know, like, hey, officer, it's for personal use, man. You know, kind of like that. What's the definition of personal use? Well, really, it depends. On BLM land and certain places, national parks, wherever you are, there are limits to what you can take for free of the natural geology or rocks or minerals. So before you go rock hunting or mineral or rock collecting, collecting, before you go out collecting some really cool rocks, you better find out the local laws and the regulations on whoever owns the land. And by that, I mean which government bureau owns the land because they all have their own different rules. Here at Glass Buttes, their definition of reasonable amount, now this could change at any time, but their current definition of reasonable amount is less than 250 pounds. 250 pounds! What we're looking at today is probably around 20 to 30 pounds. Why would I go that far? And it is far. Not necessarily far miles away, but it's kind of a little difficult to get there. A few hours on a highway, and then you get off the paved highway, and then you run unkept rough roads, and not just gravel roads and dirt roads, roads that may or may not, but probably usually do, have chunks of obsidian in them. And what is obsidian? Dragon glass. And what does it do? It cuts dragons, but it'll also cut the heck out of your tires. And it's hot, and it's dusty, and it's dirty. And if you think you're going to put one over on Mother Nature and go in the cooler time of year when it's rainy and wet, well, you're going to have to worry about mud. So, might as well go when it's hot and dry. So, to answer your question about why I only have between 20 and 30 pounds when I could have lugged out 250 pounds, well, I'm a connoisseur. Sometimes you'll find obsidian just laying on top of the ground. Sometimes you got to look in a crevasse or a crevice, and sometimes you got to just be digging in the dirt. Some pieces are essentially just handed to you, some you gotta work for. Two reasons I only have this amount. Number one, I'm making a day trip of it, so I'm not gonna be there mining all day long. Number two, I'm looking for something special. As you can see here, and from my last haul, if you saw that video, I have a considerable amount of mahogany obsidian. Obsidian? Mahogany. The brown stuff! And I don't want just a solid chunk of brown stuff. I mean, that's cool in itself, but I want it where it's rippled and swirled through the black obsidian. You know, your normal dragon glass. And why do I have a couple super boring pieces in this collection? Well, I want to bust them open and see what was inside. Something else that's kind of peculiar about what we have here, there's a few that look like they are cut marks with like a saw. Well, I wasn't using any saw. I got picks and shovels and hand tools. Obsidian will break a certain way, but the pieces that look like they are actually cut, that was done by somebody else. That weren't me. And because I'm not the person who goes out and collects a truckload of obsidian and makes weird things about it and sells it on the internet, because I'm not that guy, I'm only taking what I need and what I want. Your first few times, it's very tempting just to grab everything and let God sort it out. Just get everything you can, put it in the truck, and then leave. I'm looking for something special now. Take the time, look for what you want. If you don't find what you want, then there's no reason to really take anything, except maybe a little souvenir. Some of these pieces are shiny, and that's natural. Some look very dull and dirty, and some just look like crap until we wetted it. Now that you're looking at it wetted, compared to when it was dry in the early part of this video, you can see some of the potential that these rocks have. These can be cut and chipped and chiseled and polished up and they will shine. 
when you see people selling obsidian online, one of the things they'll do is they will wet it. Get it wet. Kind of like that cheat we talked about when you're cutting geodes and thunder eggs where people will smear vegetable oil on them to make them shine more. People who do that say they're doing it to give you the perspective of what it's going to look like after you're done with it. And really, if you can't look at a dull, boring rock and say, wow, that's going to look BAM like this when it's done, it does help the average viewer. All right, so there you have it. This is my second haul in the last month or so from Glass Buttes, Oregon. Look it up on the interwebs if you want to know where that is. This is only a couple hours worth of collecting. The rest of that 10-hour day was on the road. Only a few hours on the real paved highway. It's just the back roads that take extra time and extra care. And really quick, you want to ask yourself, is it worth it to spend 10, 12 hours to go out in the wilderness and risk all kind of bad things happening just to get this? Yeah, I think so. I don't need any more than this. This is what I wanted. I guess if I would have spent the night there, I would have had more time to dig and mine. But that wasn't my plan. Day trip, simple in and out operation. Bam! Leave your comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Meister 22, the most dangerous man on YouTube.